meteor, three times the size of Earth, is heading towards us in a collision course that will result in the extinction of all life on this planet. This just in? No, it's not. Oh, good. Our guest is Tulika Bose, assistant professor of physics at Boston University and a member of the great international team of scientists preparing for the reboot of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in 2015. What about the Higgs? I think, again, I'd, I'd like to start with an analogy to sort of first talk about, you know, what is it? What yes, is the Higgs right, boson? right. So uh, what I find useful, I'm going to borrow from actually a set of cartoons <coughs> that, was, that were uh, written by David Miller from UCL London. The UK science minister put out a challenge asking for cartoons or anything to explain the Higgs mechanism. <laughs> okay. And, the, and the, the prize was going to be a bottle of champagne. So David Miller went and he came up with these set of cartoons. And they're beautiful because you can really explain it in mm -hmm. just, you know, three cartoons. So imagine you have a room full of people. They're at a party, a cocktail party. And a very famous person comes in through the door. And as the person walks in, people start clustering around this famous person because they want to talk to him or her. Mm -hmm. And the person wants to go to the other end of the room, but they're unable to go because they're being stopped by these groups of people. So it's almost as if that this, uh, the fact that they are going more and more slowly mm -hmm seems like they have acquired more mass. You know, massive particles mm -hmm, travel mm -hmm, slowly. Mm -hmm. Here, this person is being stopped and is not going. So they're interacting more with the people, as a result of which they seem to have acquired mass. So higher the interaction, larger the mass. On the other hand, if a c completely or relatively unknown person walks in, nobody wants to talk to them. They can go from one end of the room to the mm -hmm. other. No interaction, no mass. They mm -hmm, don't seem to mm -hmm, have it stopped mm -hmm, at all. Mm -hmm. So this was the idea that those people in the room is this Higgs field. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how a particle interacts with the Higgs field determines its mass. If it does not interact, it's massless. If it interacts, it's got mass. How much it interacts determines how heavy its mass is. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a Higgs field, but we talk about a Higgs boson. Mm -hmm. Now, what's mm -hmm. a Higgs boson? Mm -hmm. Now, going back to our original room where people partying, suppose somebody puts their head in and they start a rumor. Now, they're not actually coming into the room, but the fact that people near the door have heard this rumor, they start talking about it. Then this goes on to the central part of the room and then to the other part of the room. So again, there is a clump or a mass of people who are passing this rumor mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. So this sort of a clump in this Higgs field is the Higgs boson. What? <laughs> Let me get this straight. When a particle moves through the Higgs field, it acquires mass. Some particles may not. But ones that don't, don't have any mass. But ones that interact with the field, then they acquire mass, even though it's apparently a particle which one would assume has mass to begin with, but no, no, it's only when it reacts. Anyway, Higgs boson, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she doesn't say that one goes through and reacts and one goes through and or reacts and interacts and one does and one doesn't. No, 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 the Higgs boson, that's like a rumor <laughs> that interacts with the Higgs field. That's the that's the microphone dropping right there. I'm telling you, and that's the truth. It isn't a particle. It's information. It's nothing physically. It's something. Oh, we're so freaking lied to. It is the essence of all of everything is information. Information can create interaction. This interaction creates mass. And the fact that the Higgs field is there, you can only appreciate it if you find this clump or this particle, which is the Higgs boson. So for the last 50 years, we've been <laughs> hunting 
to find this Higgs boson so that we can prove that the Higgs field therefore must exist mm -hmm. and is mm -hmm. responsible for giving mass to particles. Is it also responsible for the differences in mass, uh, assignment of mass to different particles? Yes, okay. again, yes. So depending on how a particle interacts, mm -hmm. how much it interacts, okay. Good. will determine mm -hmm. essentially what its mass is. And that's where we, that's when we try to hunt for the Higgs. We try to hunt for the Higgs in different ways, in, in, a, in mm. the sense that the Higgs can decay into different particles. Say what? <laughs> and they're telling us that a Higgs boson, it weighs more. Actually, I don't know if she mentioned that this part or not, but it can quote unquote decay into these other particles, into these quarks. Protons, neutrons, actually the protons and neutrons are made from quarks. It's quarks for all that matters. All particles, all of matter, all of everything, physical. This is incredible. So you look, they look for a Higgs boson that's from their analogy created from a rumor information which they seem to really like. It, it won the competition, and she loves it. I think it's the truth. A particle, or perhaps not, but something created from information, which then has mass and momentum, movement with mass, i.e. momentum, which is very heavy. For some reason, it's harder to find the heavier ones. Go figure because everything's upside down and backwards, right? And it can, quote unquote, decay, <laughs> again, upside down and backwards, transform, I would claim, into all the other particles, which essentially makes up our physical reality. This is freaking incredible. <laughs> if I continue on with the upside down and backwards, I would suggest, they weren't looking for it because they knew it was there, because they think it might be there. They're looking for it because they're trying to prove that they can create it. They're making it. How are they how are they making it? It's information. What act creates this? What energy, what impact on reality creates the Higgs boson? Perhaps a colliding of proton particle beams in the collider that they're trying to get at near light speed. That's the action. And who did it? It's the reaction, the creation of the Higgs boson. Cracking into reality, or perhaps um, creating a more neutral or fundamental form an isolated part of reality that then decays and become the particles that we already know of that exist. The question, the big question is, what affects or determines what particles it becomes? Where do they go? <laughs> what the hell's going on? What is there any other information involved in the process? <laughs> How about at the epicenter <laughs> in the middle of the collider? Hmm. And herein comes the fact that the standard model, which is this uh, it's an elegant set of equations which sort of describe all of particle physics. It has certain expectations for what the Higgs interactions with all of these particles should be. So that's great. That means we might actually be able to make these particles in the LHC. Smooth distribution with peaks. So this, this peak, for example, that lines up when, you, when you've just got enough energy to make a charm-anti-charm -charm pair. The next peak is if you can make a bottom quark and an anti-bottom quark. And here, at 90 GV, that's when you've got enough energy to make Z bosons. It's like several orders of magnitude more likely than just the continuum behind it. The main way of producing a Higgs boson is through 
collisions of gluons. So it's a gluon from each proton that gets picked up. But the gluon is a massless particle, so actually the gluon can't connect straight to a Higgs boson. It requires one of these tricky quantum mechanical processes where the gluons themselves wink out of existence and go via some heavier particle to make a Higgs boson. So next year, 2015, if we start running at double the energy, that's going to make it easier to make these events with, with very high missing transverse energy. We'll be able to probe this distribution even more. Will some excess of events actually start to appear in this high tail? So what? CERN and their 666 colliders making some matter doesn't prove anything. But when I see videos like this, and I'd like to thank Stasha Erickson for bringing this to our attention a while back. You know, again, maybe it means nothing, but you can only shake your head. So this is the opening act for the Queen's birthday, the Queen of England's birthday. Drummers from Switzerland that, as she mentions in the beginning, taken time off work. I thought the point of drummers is to perform especially for people like the Queen, but apparently they had to take time off work. And their top secret, their outfits have top secret on it. Like, it's ridiculous. And this one here, these people, like, I don't know, you know, I, I know who they are. But this one in the middle is kind of looking like Lizzie the Third to me. Firstly, from, from Switzerland, Switzerland, the world's, world's best, best kept secret, secret drummers have taken time, time off work, work to be here. here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Switzerland's top secret drum corps. Thank you. 